thank you very much for joining. Uh, I think it's uh, time to begin. And I think, thank you for coming to this session. It's about contributing to automotive grade Linux and Geneva development platform. My name is Lona Navi, and I'm a senior software engineer at Consalco Group. The company provides open source consultancy services for embedded devices and for the automotive industry. So as part of my awesome job, I had the opportunity to contribute to a lot of open source projects, a lot of upstream work. And that's how I got involved with both automotive grade Linux and Geneva development platform. So today, I'll try to share with you my experience. The agenda for today includes a brief introduction, first to automotive grade Linux, then to Geneva development platform. Uh, it's a very, very brief introduction, so I just want to show you some of the core components of, in both platforms. Uh, we can see the similarities between the, the, the platforms. And after that, we'll focus on how to start contributing to these uh, to these platforms. It's going to be a technical talk, but it's, uh, it's for beginners, so don't worry, ask questions. Uh, I'll try to answer. The good thing is that I see a lot of other contribut uh, contributors around here, so even someone from the crowd can uh, provide better answers than me. So it will be nice to have a good discussion overly. Um, so our motive, great Linux. Uh, this is a project of the Linux Foundation. Uh, the purpose of the project is to create in vehicle infotainment uh, GNU Linux distribution that is entirely open source. It's based on the Yocto project and Open Embedded. This is uh, um, the, the, the build system that we are using. So basically, if you want to get started with this platform, the minimum requirements is to get familiar with the Yocto project and Open Embedded because you need uh, to know how to use BitBake to add recipes, to modify recipes. And this is the first step of uh, making contributions to the platform. How many of you are familiar with automotive grade Linux? OK, almost everyone. Do you have a hands-on experience, like contributing patches or something like this? OK, good. Three or four people. Um, I hope that by the end of this talk, all of you will be interested in contributing to, uh, to the platform. The platform was uh, founded in 2014. Uh, but it really took off in uh, 2015 and last year in 2016. We have uh, some great uh, demos for Consumers Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And this is the, the current stable version of AGL. Um, AGL is a project of the Linux Foundation, but there are a lot of companies that are members of the project. Uh, I took a screenshot from the website of automotive grade Linux, so you can ha have a look at all the companies contributing to the platform. It's a very, very long list. I was so happy that I, I was able to put all these logos in a single slide. And after that, I went to Twitter and I found that even more members are coming. <laughs> so uh, yes, AGL has a lot of members and uh, new companies are joining the platform every day. Um, these are the top contributors of AGL, the top 25 contributors. I took uh, this, uh, this slide from Walt's presentation, who's sitting over there. He had a, a nice presentation doing, during the uh, AGL AMM meeting. So you can have a look at the, the number of commits that are, people are contributing, the companies involved. And uh, this, this, is, this is, of course, just the top contributors. There are a lot more companies and individuals contributing to automotive grade Linux. Um, in order to get familiarized with the platform, we need to speak about the core technologies in it. Um, as you can guess, each GNU Linux distribution has a lot, a lot of packages, a lot of components, and this is just a small portion of the components in the distribution. Uh, this, I did this uh, based on my point of view, so I might miss something that's really important, but you know, in a single slide, I didn't want to put too much information. Uh, the, the, the most important ingredient in any Linux distribution, of course, is the Linux kernel and the board support packages. Uh, this is very dependent on the hardware to which you would like to uh, get AGL running. Uh, AGL, as well as the Geneva development platform, both use systemd. So um, it's, um, I know that a lot of people are still in the discussion System 5, System D, but for AGO, it's set to System D. Um, 
Dbus is used for communication. And it's important to say that the security model of automotive grade Linux is very special. It, uh, it uses SMAC, Sinara, and application framework. So if you want to build a, an image of AGL for a new board or to port it for a new hardware device, you should make sure that SMAC is enabled in the Linux kernel, in the dev config of the Linux kernel. SMAC provides uh, isolation of applications on kernel level. And after that, we have the Sinara project. Uh, which, was, which is also used in other um, projects such as Tizen. It, uh, provides, it, it is an open source tool for uh, managing privileges of applications that are accessing um, peripheral devices. So for example, if an application wants to, a third party application wants to access a camera or something like this, uh, the application should have privilege to access it and Sinara is the software for making, uh, managing all these privileges. And on top of the security model, we have the application framework, uh, which is um, basically a, the way to develop the application and to connect them to the rest of the security framework within AGL. Uh, keep in mind that AGL has the security model, as uh, sooner or later you have to handle it uh, when you are developing your applications or adding new components to the platform. Um, the Soda client and OS3 provides uh, software over the air updates. Uh, I'm working on this project as part of the work uh, that ADS Advanced Telematic Systems and Consalco Group are doing for integration of this project. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, this project exists both in Geneva Development Platform and Automotive Grade Linux. So it's a good way to show the collaboration and how uh, components are used in this uh, uh, how similar components are implemented in these different distributions. Speaking about uh, the graphical user interface, uh, we should uh, mention that AGL is uh, using Wayland. This is the display server protocol uh, that is designed as a replacement of X11. And it's great that uh, automotive uh, great Linux is uh, innovative and uh, they have decided to use Wayland from, from day one. Weston is the reference implementation of a compositor for Wayland. It's uh, Weston in AGL is working with um, IBI Wayland extensions. And on top of this, we have a user interface which at the moment is developed with Qt and QML HMI, uh, Qt and uh, QML applications. They were developed for, the, the current version of the applications were developed for the Consumers Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And they look pretty good actually. You can have a look at them uh, today because uh, there is going to be a showcase of AGL. At what time is it, Walt? Let's have a picture of it at 5.30. Okay, so you can come to the AGL booth and have a look at it. It's really nice. Alternatively, if you want, you can run HTML5 applications. That's perfectly fine. And for uh, streaming uh, video or audio, we've got a GStreamer. As I mentioned, uh, AGL is a Yocto open embedded based distribution. Therefore, it's important to say which are the meta layers within it. it. Um, so, of course, there is Pocky. Pocky is the reference dis uh, distribution of the Yocto project. It's part of the layers included in AGL. The special AGL layers are here, meta AGL, meta AGL demo, meta AGL devel and extra. We have uh, the Meta Intel IoT security layer, which provides uh, some of the recipes needed uh, for building the security, um, the security stuff in AGL. And Meta OIC is the, um, is the layer providing um, interfaces for uh, IoTivity. This is a project, open source initiative for a project uh, for connecting um, um, smart, uh, home devices. So it's a good way to connect uh, the, these, uh, the connected car with the connected home. And of course, there is MetaQt5, uh, which is needed for the Qt applications. Um, I guess you're interested to learn which are the supported devices, and AGO provides a long list of uh, devices that are compatible. Um, Renesas Generation 2 and Generation 3 boards are compatible. 
So our boards with Intel systems, uh, uh, Intel uh, CPUs like Mino board, Max and Turbo, as well as Intel Ju, which was um, recently added. There is a value board as well in the list of supported devices. And on the bottom of the list, we have um, community supported boards. Uh, Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 are both supported. And um, I'm very personally attached to Raspberry Pi because I was heavily involved in the initial porting of AGL to Raspberry Pi. Uh, of course, we know that Raspberry Pi is not good for industry use, but it's uh, good enough to, to have a quick look at what, what AGL offers. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, yes, you can, uh, Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, yes, you have a board on which you can uh, run AGL. Dragon board, as well as IMX6 devices are also supported. AGL provides uh, releases um, pretty much every twice a year. The first release was in January 2016, and uh, in the AGO wiki, you can find uh, the exact dates for the scheduled releases up to uh, the end of the year. The current release that we are uh, using in discussion is uh, release 3.0, which was uh, announced a month ago in January. So um, now I would like to do another short overview of the Geneva development platform. Um, so. There is a Geneva Alliance, uh, which is looking after the development of the, uh, the distribution as, as well as the compliance standards for Geneva. Uh, it's another distribution that at the moment is based on the Yocto project and Open Embedded. How many of you have experience with Geneva Development Platform? Okay. Um, so Gen Geneva Development Platform has a very, very long history. I won't go into the details because we have just 15 minutes for this talk, so, and it's a long, uh, long story. I'll just uh, mention the things that we have right now in Geneva Development Platform. The project was founded in 2009, uh, so uh, it brings uh, a, a lot of stuff through the years. These are the, the Geneva members. As you can see, there are a lot of companies from various fields contributing to the project. Car manufacturers, uh, Tire One, OEMs, and these are the core technologies uh, used in Geneva Development Platform. Uh, it's again just a small portion of the technologies used in the, this Linux distribution, because as you know, each distribution has hundreds or maybe thousands of packages. And again, this is from my perspective, from my point of view, the uh, components that I think that are core and interesting for this talk. Uh, of course, we have the board support package layer for the supported uh, hardware devices that brings uh, the bootloader and the Linux kernel version. Again, it's a distribution using uh, systemd uh, of the layers uh, for inter-process communication. We have Dbus as well as two projects which are uh, specific for Genevi, common API, and uh, remote vehicle interaction interface. The Soda client is again there. It's um, it's um, application that is currently uh, written in the Rust programming language, but is being rewritten uh, re in uh, C++, and it provides um, the feature for uh, downloading and installing uh, updates over the air. From the user interface, we have, again, Wayland, the display uh, server protocol, so it's um, pretty similar to what we have in AGL. We have Weston, again, this is the reference uh, compositor of the Wayland uh, display protocol. And the applications are written in Qt and QML. But although the same technology is used, the user interface is completely different from what we have in AGL. Just keep in mind that these user interfaces are just for, at the moment, for uh, demo purposes. So uh, if a company wants to ship a product based on uh, Geneva development platform as well as on automotive grade Linux, uh, the user interface is supposed to be changed. The structure of Geneva development platform is very specific. Uh, therefore, I have a few slides uh, in, uh, with which I would like to explain uh, how things work. So the board support packages depends on the hardware uh, on which 
Geneva development platform works. Uh, there is Pocky, the, the reference system of the Yocto project again, uh, just like in AGL. But the difference here is that Meta IVI is a layer uh, that contains the Geneva baseline, which means that these, um, these components that are here in Meta IVI have to be compliant with the Geneva, uh, with, with, with the Geneva standards. Uh, keep in mind this if you want to contribute anything to Meta IVI. The rest of the Yocto layers bring the H uh, HMI, the applications, and the extra features of the Geneva development platform. So in the next slide, uh, we have just a list of the uh, Yocto layers uh, that uh, are, exist in Geneva development platform. Let's have a quick uh, look at them. Pocky, the reference system of the Yocto project. Meta IVI that we just discussed, it contains the uh, Geneva baseline. Meta Geneva Dev, this is uh, the layer uh, in which uh, the majority of the development is going on. Uh, Meta OIC, again for IOTivity. Meta Qt5, it's, uh, it's needed for, for the um, uh, graphical user interface and the Qt applications. And Meta RVI for uh, re remote vehicle interaction. The list of supported devices for Geneva Development Platform uh, is uh, Renesas Generation 2 and Generation 3 boards, um, devices with Intel CPU, like uh, the open source hardware boards, Mino board, Max and Turbo, as well as Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Uh, I did a photo of the user interface that you see when you uh, launch uh, Geneva Development Platform on uh, any of these devices. This is what you see on the screen at the moment. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say something very important. Even if you don't have this device or the devices that we uh, listed for uh, as supported devices in uh, automotive grade Linux, you still have a chance to run it uh, using uh, Quemo. So even if you don't have the hardware, you can have a look at the platform, build it, and play with it. The GDP releases um, are here. So the next release is scheduled for April 2017, and the current release, GD, uh, Geneva Development Platform 11, uh, was released in December. So um, I would like to mention a few words about the SOTA project, just because I'm personally attached to it, and um, I know a few details about its development. Uh, so it's a complete open source suite for uh, uploading, managing, transmitting, validating, uh, downloading and installing uh, software updates remotely to fleet of vehicles. The idea is that uh, uh, companies should be able to do this for millions of vehicles. At the moment, uh, ADS Advanced Telematic Systems are working on its development and uh, Consalco Group is providing some consultancy services for the integration uh, within the automotive industry. Yes, please. Okay, just to summarize the question and to repeat it for the video, uh, the question is uh, how is actually the uh, software over the year working in terms, is it uh, doing partition upgrades or uh, full image up updates? Is this a correct summary? It's the full image versus individual components okay. on top of an image. So the, the answer is that uh, <coughs> it, it's, it, uh, it's supposed to do full image updates using another open source tool called uh, OS3. So in general, OS3 is a project that was uh, initially created for uh, GNOME, and it's uh, used in the continuous integration of GNOME. The project is known as GNOME Continuous, but it's a great tool because it provides um, static deltas, uh, like uh, binary diffs, between the images. So uh, it's very convenient, especially for the automotive industry. And uh, uh, OS3 provides us this feature that we can download a smaller uh, files, just the, the static deltas, and apply them. So yes, it's a full image update, but in the same time, it's not using the dual partition strategy, it's, uh, it's um, using OS3. Yeah, it's, uh, the advertisement of OS3 is a Git-like model for committing and downloading bootable system trees. And actually, even the commands that you use in OS3 are very similar to the commands that you know from Git. Um, 
The software over the air includes uh, both a client that is running on the embedded devices in the vehicles and a server that is uh, uh, supposed to be deployed in the cloud and uh, take uh, the intelligent decisions, uh, which version should be provided to the car and how to be installed. Uh, it's important to mention uh, the AGL developer tools. Um, of course, uh, the main tool is Git. Uh, all the repos are in uh, using Git, and uh, the Google repo tool is used to uh, put together uh, all the, the Git repositories of the meta layers that we saw on the previous slides uh, that are combined together to build the uh, AGL system. Um, so, uh, Garrett is another tool for uh, code reviews. It's used in AGL, as well as Jenkins for continuous integration. Basically, if you do a new commit, submit it to, through uh, Garrett, Jenkins will take care to build this image. Jira is uh, used for book reporting. There is a wiki, which is currently um, based on DocuWiki, where we put some developer information. And there is a new documentation site that is currently being developed. Please note that this is, these are not all the tools that we have in AGL, but uh, this is the majority of the tools. So uh, yes, there are additional open source components that are used as uh, developer tools within uh, AGL. And uh, this afternoon, Jan Simon is going to have a very interesting talk about the integration of uh, Linaro's Wava project for the continuous integration of AGL. You can have a look at it as well. And now we are coming to the core of this talk, it's how can you contribute to automotive grade Linux and how you can contribute to Geneva Development Platform. We're starting again with AGL first. So the workflow is very basic. Uh, it's quite standard for, I would guess, uh, any software project. First, you have to identify the issue on which you would like to to work. It could be a bug fix, it could be a new feature, you have to report it in Jira so other people can see it. After that, you should uh, grab the source code, modify it, and when you are ready uh, with your commit, make sure that you are adding a reference to the Jira issue in the git commit messages. Finally, you should contribute uh, your change to, to the upstream using uh, Garrett. Of course, if there are some remarks, you might need to change a little bit things and to, to resubmit them again. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Garrett? Have you used Garrett? Okay, almost everyone. It's uh, one of the most popular ways to contribute to bigger open source projects, and even not open source, of course. Uh, it's a free and open source web-based uh, team collaboration tool, perfect for code reviews. Uh, the first step that you should do to get started and to contribute to AGL is to go to identity.linuxfoundation.org to create an account and to get started. This is the basic workflow. Um, so it's a, it's a standard workflow for um, contributing through Garrett. We have uh, the AGL repo there. So the developer is supposed first to, um, to pull all the changes from the AGL repo on his local repository, then to modify some, um, some files depending on the issue on, on which he's uh, working. And um, after that, to push them back to Garrett. And at that moment, Garrett will uh, create a, a ticket within its web interface from which the reviewer can have a look. He can fetch the code, he can um, make commands, and uh, approve it if it's okay to be merged. The best part in Garrett is that all the other contributors can vote for the change. They can uh, provide positive or negative votes. So this is also a nice uh, feature that Garrett offers because this way a lot of people can uh, work together and it's uh, very good for in terms of community. So if the, um, if the reviewer and the maintainer have no remarks, he will approve the pending changes and they'll go to the AGL repository. So this is an example that I wanted to show you. This is a real commit that I did a few months ago. We still have some time. Uh, I'll tell you the story quickly. So basically, on Raspberry Pi and some of the Renesas boards, I think it was Renesas Porter board, we had this issue that Weston, the reference system, uh, the reference compositor for Wayland, was not showing up. 
uh, with the uh, HMI applications if there, were, if there were no input devices attached to the board. And it appears that this was, uh, this was actually a feature of Western because in a desktop environment, it doesn't make sense uh, to have a, a board without input devices, without a keyboard or mouse. But in a, in a, in a demo for automotive distribution, it's a little bit different. So uh, we had this uh, complaints from people coming through the mailing list that they were booting AGL and nothing was showing up on the screen. I did a uh, research and it appears that uh, this was part of the implementation of Western. So I did a patch, which is specifically for AGL, that fixes it. So this is the patch. You, you, uh, if you have a look here, we have this reference to Jira. So I reported the issue first in Jira to, to generate this uh, ID spec uh, 297. Uh, After that, I put it in my git commit message. And this is the change ID that is generated by Garrett. Basically, when you are checking out the source code from Garrett, you uh, get a hook that generates these IDs. And if you somehow uh, forgot to do it, uh, Garrett will take care to do it even if you push it without the change ID, something will be assigned automatically. So um, how to get started and what are the communication channels? There is a mailing list. So if you are not part of the mailing list, please join. Are you members of the mailing list already? A EGO mailing list or just a few of you? Oh, please come and join. There is a weekly developer call that Walt is uh, doing each Tuesday. So you can join and uh, we can collaborate together. The best part is that it's, uh, uh, it's uh, using GoToMeeting, yeah. Yeah, which, which runs on the Linux. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Very convenient for developers. And of course, we've got the RC channel, which is automotive at uh, freenode.net. Uh, it's a collaborative channel for both uh, Genevi and automotive grade Linux. So if you have a quick question or if you uh, have an urgent question, RC channel should, your, should be your first shot. So the Geneva developer tools now, let's have a look at them. Uh, although the, the majority of the core, core components that I listed in the previous slides are quite similar, the uh, approach for contributing to Geneva is uh, totally different. Uh, of course, again, Git is the, the source control system, but um, following um, some major changes that happened in the last year, which uh, were done by the team of, uh, from CodeFink working on uh, Geneva development platform. Now contributions are accepted through GitHub with the GitHub pull requests. We're gonna see this later on on the slides. For continuous integration, uh, Geneva is using a tool called GoCD. Uh, the book reporting is done again in Jira, and there is a wiki, uh, which is the Confluence uh, wiki provided by Atlassian. So the workflow for contributing to MetaGenev Dev is the standard workflow that uh, pretty much everyone know uh, from uh, from GitHub. First, of course, you have to report uh, the the issue in Jira. This way, you have a reference to you can have a reference to it when you are submitting your Git messages. Then you have to fork the the project in GitHub to uh, to clone it locally to modify the source code to make the new feature or the bug fix on which you have reported in Jira. Um, after that, to include the reference to the Jira issue in the git commit, git, git commit message. And after that, to create a GitHub pull, pull request where you can discuss the change with the maintainers. So um, I did a diagram just to show this uh, process again. So it's fork, edit, commit, after that push, create a GitHub pull request, of course, the push is in your local fork in GitHub. Uh, after creating the GitHub pull request, uh, there probably will be some commands. You might need to change something. So if, if the maintainer provides you some recommendations, just go again, edit, commit again. Uh, don't worry. It's a standard procedure. Not all the patches go from the first time. Just please be patient and uh, follow the instructions provided by the maintainers. And here is another example of a um, git commit message uh, that I created again a few months ago. And do you notice something? It's exactly the same problem that we had in AGL. 
I was working uh, on Geneva development platform with Raspberry Pi, and I, I noticed that, wow, we have the same issue here. It's again the issue that I explained you with the input devices, what Western wasn't starting if there were no input devices. I s included especially this commit because I believe this is a good example how the projects can work together and how the projects are from time to time facing the same issues. So the, of course, the commit has to be signed off. This is valid for both platforms. Here is the reference that we have to the Geneva Jira, Jira issue. So uh, this is the exact number with it. And this has been committed from uh, through GitHub. So this is actually a screenshot of our area from my web browser. Um, so contributing to uh, Meta IVI is a little bit more different because as I mentioned, Meta IVI contains the Genevi components that are part of the Genevi compliance specification. Uh, in order to contribute new components or to update versions of the existing components, uh, you should have them uh, part of the Genevi compliance specifications. If you do an update to a version that is not part of this compliance, uh, probably the, the patch will be rejected. I have been there, done that, uh, so my advice is to double check uh, the, the, specific, the Geneva compliance specifications before making any changes to Meta IVI. This will save you some time. Uh, just go to the mailing list and ask if you're not, not sure. Again, the, the git commit messages uh, has to be signed and they have to be submitted uh, using the Meta IVI mailing list, using the git send command. It's a different workflow for contributing uh, these patches, but Meta IVI and Meta Geneva Dev have uh, different maintainers. Uh, currently, uh, people from uh, Wind River are looking after Meta IVI, while uh, a team from Pewaji Core is looking after Meta Geneva Dev. Um, this is a sh uh, simple example to show you how you can submit the patch. It's a little bit different from GitHub, but again, it's a well known procedure for submitting patches uh, through Git send mail. And the Geneva development uh, platform has its own communication channels. There is a mailing list. I asked this about AGO, but how many of you are subscribed to Geneva list? Okay. So don't hesitate, join the mailing list. Uh, there is an open call that, is, that takes place uh, Wednesday. The one for AGO is on Tuesday. The one for the Geneva development platform is on Wednesday. So there is no conflict in terms of times. Unfortunately for me, because I'm a Linux user, as a developer, my laptop is uh, running Ubuntu. Uh, Geneva Development Platform is using WebEx for uh, making these calls. In general, WebEx can run on the Linux, but it's quite tricky to do it. So you either have to install something that's 32-bit or something, or use another device, for example, Android. Or something that's not that open source. And uh, the IRC channel is the same just as for automotive grade Linux. It's great that we are all together in this IRC channel all the time, so join the automotive IRC channel and ask any urgent questions or provide help to people that are asking urgent questions. So thank you very much. The slides are already uploaded at the website of the event. I have put them in SlideShare as well, and we've got like 10 to 15 minutes for questions and discussions. Yes, please. Uh, you said the talk for beginner, so I'm asking a beginner question. So is there any relationship between those two projects? You said uh, there is no change between those projects, but to, to me it seems that they are competing projects. So what is the relationship? Uh, okay, so the question is, what is the relationship between Geneva Development Platform and Automotive Grade Linux? Uh, it's a simple question with a very tough answer because it involves a lot of politics and I'm a software engineer. <laughs> so you're putting me here in a hard situation. <laughs> well, I guess in, term, uh, in marketing terms, yes, they're competing. Uh, in terms from technology, they have some similarities. They're, they have some differences. Um, you saw the, the list of uh, core components and the list of supported devices, so you can you can do the, the math and compare them. Um, so AGL at the moment is more uh, code first. So it's uh, 
AGL is uh, having a very rapid development nowadays, while Geneva has these uh, compliance standards uh, that I described in uh, Geneva Baseline and uh, Meta IDI. Can I ask a second? Yes, of course. Okay, <laughs> the, the question is, are there specific areas Genevi versus AGL, right? Another tough question. <laughs> uh, well, let me think about it. Um, I, I'm not feeling very comfortable to answering to such question because I don't want to compare uh, the, the two platforms in, uh, from the point of view of marketing. I just wanted to show you how you can contribute to both platforms since I have this experience. Yes, please, over there. Okay, let me summarize the so question. Steering committee, sorry, that's the word. Yes, uh, the question is about the AGO steering committee. Yes, uh, AGO has several layers of management. Uh, the steering committee is on top of them. them. Um, it's again a, a little bit of a politics question that I'm not sure that I can provide exact answer, but I'm sure that Walt can. So probably his talk could okay. provide you more details. About contributing, everyone can contribute, companies or individuals. Just uh, create an account, it's totally free, it's easy to do it, subscribe to the mailing list, and you can get your changes there. If you are not sure uh, about anything, you can ask in RC or join the weekly calls on Tuesday. Yes, please. Uh, how closely are you tracking upstream, uh, meta, medium, hockey? Oh, excellent question. So the question is, how closely is the upstreaming with uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded, like uh, Pocky and Meta OE? Um, thank you very much for this question because I had in mind to, to mention this and I forgot to say it. The Yocto project has a six months release cycle, so every six months there is a new release and the current uh, stable release of the Yocto project uh, is called Morty. This is version 2.2 and uh, both platforms are trying to stick to the, to the newest releases. So as soon as there is a new release of the Yocto project, um, automotive grade Linux and Geneva development platform are uh, updated accordingly uh, to the uh, to the release schedule that they have. Uh, other questions? Yes, please. So I have basically the same question about the Linux kernel version that all the vendors use. Um, so are there, uh, are there, is the project trying to dictate which version of the kernel to use, or is it just a totally up to the vendor? Okay, uh, are you asking for a specific? Uh, oh, sorry. AGL, okay. So let me repeat the question for the video. The question is, is AGL trying to dictate uh, the version of the Linux kernel? And the answer is no. Uh, the, the Linux kernel, as well as the bootloader, depends on the board support packages. Uh, from the slides with the supported devices in AGL, I mentioned that we have some vendor supported uh, platforms and we have others that are community supported, such as Raspberry Pi. So it depends on the board support package provided by the um, by the hardware vendor or the community looking after the specific device that it supported. Of course, you have to keep in mind that it could not be very old kernel because you have to use systemd, which requires some C groups, and you have to use uh, CMake, but uh, uh, pretty much any, any modern device has these capabilities, or I hope they have it. Yes, please. And Okay, um, Okay. so let me repeat the question again. So what is the philosophy for contributing upstream to the projects, to the core open source projects that are used in AGO, right? So uh, based on the example that I gave with this Western patch. Uh, depends, depends on the patch. The current patch that we uh, had a look here uh, is for um, is for uh, Western, the, the versions of Western used in the platform. Uh, by the time when I did uh, the patch, uh, AGL was work using Western 1.9, uh, and AGL was working uh, is using uh, Western 1.11. So um, the patch is not upstream because uh, it's very specific. I'm not sure it works well for the desktop use case. It's very specific for the demonstrations of uh, both two platforms 
on these devices. And uh, Western is moving forward with the releases. Basically, the, the platforms are following the release, the, the versions of uh, Western and Wayland uh, set by the releases of the Yocto project and Open Embedded. I hope this answers to the question. It's, it de depends on the patch. Uh, for the specific patch, uh, in the newer Western versions, they already have a configuration to enable or disable this, so it was not very appropriate to submit it upstream. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Yes, please. So on the subject of Western, I noticed on the Western, the INI file, you manually edit resolution right now. Um, and if you have a different screen size, you have to change that. Is there a way to auto-detect, or is there any thoughts about that? Okay, so the question is uh, about Western. I'll just provide a few details before repeating the question. Western has a configuration file called western.ini, and the question is uh, why do you have uh, to set resolutions at the western.ini file? It's a question that is valid for both platforms, since both platforms are using Wayland and Western. And uh, the answer is that it depends on the supported uh, uh, supported monitors. Um, it's a little bit tricky to have everything working in full HD on all supported devices with the touch screens. Uh, so both platforms have a list of supported uh, and preferred uh, touch screen devices. It does not mean that you cannot use them with other devices. Yes, of course you can, but for other devices you might need some additional efforts. And uh, yes, the Western Ini files contain this uh, specific configurations in terms of uh, uh, screen resolution depending on the uh, supported hardware. So it's a kind of a hardware specific solution. It's, it's pretty much how it's done because the different devices that are supported have uh, different hardware capabilities. Therefore, uh, we have uh, BB append files that extend the, the basic recipe and overwrite the Western Ini file. I hope this answers the question, and thanks for the help. <laughs> Any other uh, questions? Okay, thank you very much for joining the talk. I hope you enjoyed it.